In this episode of another Zelda podcast, Alyssa Ortiz returns to build a top 10 list of some of the most bothersome baddies. Hello and welcome to another Zelda podcast. I am David Geisler, one of your hosts for tonight's episode. Two possessives there, Alyssa. <laughs> Alyssa Ortiz, how are you? I am good. How are you doing tonight? I'm well. You are you are the other host for tonight's episode. Mm-hmm. And uh, we met two episodes back to yes. discuss Kakariko Village. Yes. And before that, we had, we had a, an emotional storyline episode back in season two. But what was it? What did we talk about in the beginning of season three? You and I got together for... Episode two or something. It was favorite something. Oh my gosh. I'm having a brain fart. <laughs> okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, my brain's not working here. What hey, did no, we it's th- okay. What did we talk about? I know I did two episodes. With yeah. You. Yeah. No, you were on season three. <laughs> well, you know what? I actually have the podcast up right here. This is a great way to start off. Uh, well, also, you know, just eight. I'm like, oh, do you know what coma. it is? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Evolution of items. That's what we Evolution talked about. Evolution of items. Duh. That's what you are. I just pulled it up. Right. Evolution of, of items. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> We're doing a top 10 tonight. Mm-hmm. Top 10 most bothersome enemies. And yes. I'll admit, full disclosure, I think maybe Mallory Kuhn or Celeste or one of our other blog writers like Shane or Ryan um, submitted this topic idea. Nice. I was going through our group notes. We have a group chat, go, or like a group Google Drive sheet. And um, I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. Most bothersome mm. enemies. And so I might be accidentally stealing a topic from what one of the blog writers uh, suggested. Mm. But you and I are doing it. <laughs> yeah. We've built our, I've picked five, you've picked five. Is a classic top 10 episode. Yes. Just a classic AZP top 10. Now, what I think we'll do tonight is we'll go least bothersome to most bothersome. Yes. And for you, what I think I know what to find mm. bothersome. But for you, mm. what what made a bothersome enemy? Well, when I started making my list, I went by uh, what got me in trouble as a kid, like throwing my what? controller from getting angry at a, <laughs> at a you know, a freaking enemy. Okay, okay, okay. So if an enemy made me want to throw my controller, I actually did throw my controller and got grounded for it. Yes. I, pu- I kind of put those on my list. Wow. Um, and I also, then it kind of evolved into a couple of that are giving me trouble right now. <laughs> okay, fair enough. The aggression, Alyssa. I had no idea. I was an angry child. Not I'm not like advised. that anymore. More. <laughs> I'm, so pl- I'm so pleased to hear that. <laughs> no, I do not advise that controllers are expensive. <laughs> well, these days, yeah, back when they were maybe only twenty dollars, like an old Nintendo controller was mm-hmm. very different. Um, what was it? The it was the Nintendo sixty four controllers were the first ones that were legitimately kind of expensive. I think they were even thirty dollars, mm-hmm. and at the time that was actually expensive back in the day. Now it's seventy dollars for too a controller. Much. It is. Definitely. They have a lot more going on in them. It's true. Now this we've got motion true. and sensor feedback and blah 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 and all these different things. There is more <laughs> happening. So I think I don't know if the price is unjustified for these more expensive controllers these days, but it is a lot. It is a much bigger deal to throw a controller these days than it is. Yes, and, it is. And another Zelda podcast <laughs> in no way supports or or no. endorses throwing controllers or throwing anything at, at anyone or anything really. No, just just slowly put it down, back away, and just take a deep breath. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Control breathing. <laughs> yes. <sighs> <laughs> so yeah bothersome enemies for me mm-hmm. i use the criteria of um and we'll, we'll get into listener feedback here in just a second but mm-hmm. for me a bothersome enemy was like not even a difficult enemy but the kind that when i'm going through a zelda game and it makes and it makes me go like what oh, come on or like oh no <laughs> these guys get what you know uh enemies mm-hmm. that are not particularly powerful but are annoying and yes. you know, might have certain strategies. Um, they might have certain technicalities on how to defeat them that make them um, bothersome, quite frankly. I agree with that. So that where, that's, how, that's where I went with this. Awesome. I have a little bit of listener feedback I want to do. I have just a couple mm-hmm. iTunes reviews and then I think we'll just, we're just going to we're just gonna jam okay. through this episode, right? Awesome. <clears throat> I think that's the uh, professional term <laughs> for nailing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so weird. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's see here. Let's see here. We have um, an, uh, an, an iTunes review titled Info, Fun, and Entertaining over on August 15th. Skello Steve 123 
said, when I first started to watch, I was unsure and didn't know if I liked it. But now that I know the cast and know the Zelda series a lot more, I listen every day, exclamation point. Thanks for the fun in these hard times. Yes, of course, Skello Steve, one, yes. two, three. These are hard times. We're, we're slowly coming out of said hard times. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, thank you so much for listening. Yes, thank you so much. That's great. He didn't know if he liked us at first. <laughs> I love that he does though at the end there. That's that's yeah. great. No, it's great. It's it's always it's always fun when you like try out a new show. You got to give it a couple episodes to see if it's your if yeah. it's the tone you're looking for. I give it the three episode rule. <laughs> three episode rule. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if I do that for like television. I definitely, mm-hmm. if I see a a pilot episode, I definitely wait till episode two because usually yes, six months are in between those two because you know a yeah, pilot exactly. gets shot with a totally different budget. Sometimes a completely different production crew. It does. Oftentimes the sets are different locations, you know, you got to really see episodes. And then usually season two of a television show is kind of like a floater episode. It just gets you by. Oh, so I guess mm-hmm. I use the three episode rule for television as well. Then you do. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I also use it for movies. I really don't know if I'm going to like Jurassic Park until Jurassic Park 4 comes out. <laughs> that's not, I don't think that's a good plan. No. I don't think that works. I don't think that, that works at all. Um, okay, here we go. We've got Love It. Uh, August on t- August 27th. Now, this one's going to be tricky for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, this one's going to be tricky. Um, AJ in DC golfs a lot said, I, red heart emoji, orange heart emoji, yellow heart emoji, green heart emoji, blue heart emoji, purple heart emoji, <laughs> love this podcast. I love you, hand symbol. I love you, hand symbol. I love you, hand symbol. Love you, hand symbol. Love you, hand symbol. <laughs> love you, hand symbol. Cool guy emoji. Spot the difference. And then there is literally, I don't know. 200 star face emojis oh my goodness so, you know, it's a really it's an apt review um but there is buried in there there is one emoji and i'm actually having a hard time seeing it now my eyes are going cross-eyed where is it <laughs> okay, just to, he was just full of emotion yeah. and then he says oh yeah uh, thumbs up, 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 fist punch, fist punch, high five, high five, rock on, rock on, rock on, rock on, rock on, rock on, and then about 30 asteroid aliens, and then P.S. You are awesome. Party face, 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 party face emoji. Oh gosh, <laughs> that was great. AJ and DC golf a lot. <laughs> Thank you for the five star review. Oh yeah, we, that's, you know it's fun. That was perfect. That was a weird one. I love it. I think that's great. <laughs> and then last but not least, um, wait a second. I think we'll stop there. Tiny Gannon mm-hmm. keeps tricking us. Oh. <laughs> I love Tiny Gannon's support, but uh, Tiny Gannon keeps changing their review so that they pop up on top, which is totally fine. Change your review anytime you want. There, Tiny <laughs> Gannon. I love you guys and what you're doing here. I would love to see a Zelda-like episode on Jedi Fallen Order. It's a pretty cool Indiana Jones vibe, and the puzzles and the levels are very reminiscent of Zelda. I would love to hear you take on, take it on. Also, Kate! Either way, <laughs> keep making great content and stay safe. Thank you, Tiny Gannon. Uh, we appreciate the updated review. Um, I think maybe, you know, honestly, uh, one of our Zelda-like episodes that I have in our queue at some point will be the um, Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine for Nintendo 64. Oh. It is definitely a Zelda wannabe game. I've said this for years, but I think our next Zelda-like will probably have to be Star Fox Adventures. Mm -hmm. And then after that, maybe it's Okami. But I'm going to put Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine for Nintendo 64 in there, which I own. I own the cartridge. I found it. nice. I found it at a (laughs) video game store, and it was the only time... Love those. those Alyssa, kind of do you stores. collect retro games a little bit or not so much? No, not right now. Um, I want to start. Yeah. Um, my roommate has a ton of retro games and retro sure. systems. Um, but they're not mine. They're just there. But I want them all. <laughs> I have a confession about <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. Mm. So I do. I guess you could say collect in quotes retro games. But I'm very stingy. I don't want it to oh. like become a part of my budget, so to speak. Mm. So I'll go into like a used video game store. Like we spoke about the exchange uh, two yes. episodes ago or i'll go to uh, video games then and now or even there's even a couple good ones up in wisconsin and i'm I'm like a curmudgeon if i see a game that i really want and it's seven dollars i'm like too much it's too too much much." (laughs) you know what i mean i want to go in with a twenty dollar bill and leave with three four five games yeah i'm I'm not like 
uh, you know, going to put down a hundred bucks for a certain thing. Cause in my mm-hmm. opinion, I'm not collecting these things to collect them and collect them. Cause I want them to be part of my library that I want to play. However, <laughs> Indiana Jones and the infernal machine is the only time I broke that rule. Oh, <laughs> I walked into a, some used video game store, like in Brookfield, Wisconsin or Burlington, Wisconsin or something. It's a little bit, it's about 20 minutes West of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> It might have even been just like a CD warehouse or something. One of these like, oh, Mega Media Exchange is what it was called. Oh, okay. Mega Media Exchange. And I walked in and I had already collected the Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine for Game Boy Color, which actually is a really good Game Boy Color game. Mm -hmm. Uh, A couple of the other Indiana Jones games out there, the Xbox One, the Wii One, even though the Wii One's eh, not (laughs) great. Um, And they're sitting in the ca- you know in the glass case of amongst all these other Nintendo 64 cartridges mm-hmm. is Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine and this is a cartridge that is harder to find these days yeah not a lot of them were made it was made by factor 5 at the very end of the Nintendo 64's life cycle mm. i think they later also ported it to windows or something like that but it doesn't matter <laughs> I'm, my confession is happening right now <laughs> i looked down and it was 40 dollars 40 dollars wow and i like i had to have like i had to come to myself moment i'd like really think about this and i was like oh, i shouldn't buy it unless it's like eight dollars mm-hmm. this is kind of my rule for collecting yeah and i looked at it and i was kind of looking at some other games and i was looking at it and i was like man i've been looking for this game for like a year i know i want to play it yeah like i want to play it no, it's not just about completing the collection and putting it on a shelf um and i so i did it so that's the most i ever spent <laughs> on a used video game was 40 bucks but it'll probably be the end i did it one time <laughs> the one i'm okay time. with it and we'll put it to use on this podcast. Perfect. Sound it's good? gonna be put to use. I bought that thing. I don't know, four or five years ago. But that was like the one. I like. I like shivered a little. I was like, "Don't do it." Oh don't you? Because know, it's so easy to like just collecting things is a, is a ton of fun and it's a blast. But um, yeah. but if you're collecting just to collect to get to the end of something, which is super cool for people who really, 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 really want to do that. Yeah. I think that's awesome. There's a lot of like uh, mm-hmm. video game collection YouTube channels that I watch and these mm-hmm. people are super dedicated and I think that's amazing and also in a way they're archiving history by creating these libraries yeah. love it yeah for me David Geisler mm-hmm. I'm just buying games to play yeah and uh that Dude. was the worst I ever got did you mm-hmm. did you ever buy like an old used video game for an exorbitant amount of money yeah when I because I played a lot of these um Zelda games on um my GameCube and I had the Zelda gold well, I basically had um, all the games from the first Zelda game to a demo of Wind Waker. Yes, that was that was a collector's edition disc. Yeah, I had that when I was like, when I played it, yeah. and um, don't know what happened to it as <gasps> I grew up. And I saw it at the exchange for like sixty bucks, and yep. I'm like, oh, darn it! <laughs> yep. It was a, it included uh, the Legend of Zelda, a Link, mm. Link, or Link's Adventure, the Adventure of Link. Uh-huh. I mean, I always say it yeah. wrong. Yeah, the Adventures of Link. Uh, mm. Ocarina was on there. Majora's Mask was yep. on there, and then the, the a demo of a Wind demo Waker. of Wind Waker. And the reason that that disc is valuable is because it was never actually for sale. It was one yeah. of these like you had to order it mm-hmm. and get it delivered. Yeah, I had. That's where I start. That's where my Zelda journey started. Was playing on GameCube in between. You know, really. Mm-hmm. My was mom, that disc? Yep, it was that disc. Well, yep. that kind of I can see that then. 60, <laughs> so like, sixty dollars for that disc. I I wanted it. I it's still at the exchange. I haven't bought it. <laughs> oh oh, I thought you bought what? No, I, I thought that's how this story ended. No, I haven't bought it. <laughs> oh, but you looked at it and you were tempted. I was tempted, very yeah. much tempted. Um, but also it's like I don't have a GameCube anymore, so it's like the GameCube though. I lost it. I lost my GameCube because my mom's basement got flooded and a lot oh, of stuff got so ruined. Sad. So I was just like. Yeah, someone buy me that. <laughs> That's sad. All right. It is sad, but it's okay. <laughs> I, hear you. I see. I see. Um, oh, I know Schrodinger's taken. He's uh, <laughs> taking a little nap here next to me on the couch. <laughs> anyway, so yes. we have our. I have. I have five, maybe six, with an honorable mention. I have five mm-hmm. um, enemies yes. that I find quite bothersome, and I'd like mm-hmm. to talk about it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds now, good to me. Again, again. Uh, to me, and I think we texted about this before mm-hmm. picking our lists, this does not include mini bosses or bosses or anything like that. These are the just the mm-hmm. creatures and characters you meet yes. when you're out there in the world or in a dungeon or whatever. Exactly. All yeah. Right? I have five plus extras. <laughs> five plus extras. <laughs> I have I have like ten in here, basically. Do you have a mm-hmm. solid five that you're comfortable yeah. with? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. All right. How about this? How about I go first so that... Mm-hmm. The number one, you get to go last. You get to like have the <laughs> sounds good. The top of the list there. Sound good? 
Sounds good. So my number five is, and this is why it's a five. So again, these mm-hmm. are bothersome enemies that that just un, frankly annoy me. Just annoy, yeah. Yeah, and you don't even you can even like them sometimes. It's just yeah. like really every time you, you get to one, you're like really. <laughs> so a bothersome enemy for me, my fifth in my list is the rupee like. I don't know if you've seen them too much. I actually have a picture here that you can see. Have you seen them in some of the games, the rupee likes? So they appear in Four Swords, the Minish Cap, Phantom Hourglass, and A Link Between Worlds. I blame Capcom for the rupee like. Okay. Basically, the rupee like is a like like, which normally sucks you up and eats your shield or whatever. Yes. But instead, it has a rupee dangling on top of it. The like like buries itself in the ground and pretends it's a normal rupee. So when you go for that rupee, the like like jumps out. And tries to suck you up and eat your shield. And the reason it's <laughs> bothersome to me is that you trust these rupees to some degree. Right. You're like, okay, okay, just getting rupees. What? Oh, no, what? Really? And, oh. and here's one more thing. They're not generated randomly. They're always in the same spot. And I always forget where they are. So I'm always, <laughs> you know, going through a field like, okay, rupee, rupee, rupee. rupee. Oh, that's right. Oh, the, the rupee like, stupid rupee like, get me. And so they pop out. Um, the, the, I've most they're most bothersome in Minish Cap, in my opinion. That's kind mm-hmm. of that's not exactly the first time they appeared, okay. but that's where they where they appeared in most um, most abundance, I guess you could say. And mm-hmm. so if you look closely here, Four Swords Adventures, the Minish Cap, both of those were kind of developed, not kind of, they were developed by Capcom in association with Nintendo, and they created the Wind Waker style. <laughs> then for some reason they went into Phantom Hourglass, which mm-hmm. I do remember them there. And then A Link Between Worlds. Now, I'm currently playing A Link Between Worlds. I have to kind of move the mic here a little. Um, (laughs) I'm playing A Link Between Worlds. I'm only on its second dungeon, like I said, two episodes ago. I haven't yet experienced any rupee lights. Maybe I have, actually. I think I have come across a few on the overworld. Okay. But every time... You're like, why? You. Why do you exist? It's like, and then when, especially if you, you've already come across them, and it's just like, you you just subconsciously forget that they're there. You're like, I knew you were there. <laughs> I still went for the gem. It's like, why? So it's a like-like that pretends it's a rupee. The rupee-like. That's my number five. Nice. How about you? What's your lowest you. on the list, so My to speak? lowest is the skullfish in Majora's Mask. <gasps> so that's in the, when you're in the Great Bay Area, you know, you're you know, swimming, doing your Zora thing. Yeah. And you want to zoom and go and, you know, especially in like the mechanics in Majora's Mask, you can jump out of water and do like cool flips and stuff. Yes. These things see you and automatically get in your way. Like you, I'll see one in the distance, try to keep swimming to one direction, uh-huh. but then there's another one right in front of me and it just <laughs> stops you right away. And then it's like either kill it or just keep swimming or go, try to go around it. And nice. then you go around it and then there's another one and then there's another one. It's just like, let Can they me, hurt you? Yeah, they bite you. Oh, they bite but, you. But I mean, okay. it's minimal like yeah. damage. I, Hence I think bothersome and annoying. Just bothersome and annoying. Yeah, because he just literally is get in the way, and I just want to swim real fast to my next destination. Yeah. And I'll I'll try to avoid one, and another one's already swimming straight towards me. Don't they show up in Twilight Princess too? I think they do, honestly. I think they do. Little I don't bone fish. There's a little skeleton fish, right? Skull fish. Yeah. yeah Skullfish. Okay, right. Yeah, there's skeleton fish. It literally looks like a, if you someone just. Yeah, like they it's don't. like a dead fish, like it's the cartoon version fish. of a dead fish. It's a dead fish, and it, it's I I hate those. <laughs> wow, so I don't remember them too well in Majora's Mask, but I do know that when you're that Zora, you can zip along. It's almost like you're flying. It's almost flying yeah. mechanics when you're underwater. Yeah, a lot of I noticed that a few of these I've picked because the underwater mechanic sometimes it's a little wonky, and they be the enemies became bothersome. So that was my number five. My you know least of the bothersome will be the skullfish because you're okay. not really in the water that much. There's a lot of stuff going on in Majora's Mask, and sometimes you know you just want to zoom on by, but those fish just stop you. Getting in the way, and there's no way to like you can't do like if mm-hmm. maybe in the mechanics they would create like a spin attack where in which you could power through them. So, so now there's a skill element. If you see yeah. them, fine, but if you push a certain button, you can keep going. Mm-hmm. They just get in the way no matter what. Exactly. That does indeed seem to be quite bothersome. <laughs> Very bothersome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my number four is specifically in Breath of the Wild. Okay. Octoroks. Okay. I know Octoroks are all over the place in the Zelda games. Yeah. They're, they're a staple, mm-hmm. but in Breath of the Wild, they slay me. They are my end. Like they, they are the only enemy in the game that r- ruins my experience. Because oh, you know, wow. they shoot, well, there's so many different kinds of Octoroks. There's yeah. the water ones and the flame ones and the rock ones and the whatever. But mm-hmm. any of them, yeah. um, for a couple different reasons. 
One reason is they're a little bit like a rupee like in that mm-hmm. they can pretend to be something else. They can pretend to be a treasure That's chest. True. They can pretend to be something, you know, you go for it and all of a sudden they, they pop up and they mm-hmm. knock you back. But the the most bothersome part to, to me for an Octorok in Breath of the Wild specifically is this massive long range they have mm-hmm. of shooting rocks at you. Yes. Sometimes you can be 300 feet away and it's like rocks getting you. Poof, and you're like, I can't even. Where is this coming from? I completely agree. And so there's there's entire parts of the Breath of the Wild map there. I'm like, I'm just like, I'm not going over there mm-hmm. um, because it's too much trouble to to defeat them. Mm-hmm. And you just stay away. No, maybe, you know, that's. And so, again, that's bothersome to me. Yeah, they have a range. I noticed that. Mm-hmm. The range is ridiculous. <laughs> and some of those Octroks that move them, they slide around and they move around. Yeah. Again, basically what it comes down to is a lot of my picks I'm starting to realize are, a, in my opinion, a misbalance of like opportunity to defeat you know, mm-hmm. I don't mind a difficult enemy. Right. I don't mind so one one enemy that I did not put on my list, mm-hmm. I don't remember its name right now, but um there are enemies in Zelda games that have like face shields or something. Uh-huh. And it happens in Link's Awakening, it happens in maybe I think the Oracle games. And of course what you can do is if you hit them with your sword face on, mm-hmm. they don't get hurt. But maybe they've got like their, their the rear back. end exposed or something, right. right? And so if you can get around them, you can get them, but they, maybe sometimes they're too fast. So eventually mm-hmm. you get a hook shot and you can pull the mask off these little creatures yeah. and then get them. We, we've seen these kind of creatures. Yeah. That is not a bothersome creature in my opinion. That's mm-hmm. actually a well-designed creature, even if initially it's, I guess, a little bothersome. Mm-hmm. The point is with a certain skill set, with a certain amount of, um, sometimes maybe it does include getting a new item, but you can <laughs> deal with them. You know what I mean? Yes. These are enemies where you're like, I can't deal with you <laughs> right now. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Those Octoroks, man. All right, what's your number four? So my number four, um, like I said, this is all because of I got in trouble for this one. When well, how, I was far did, how far did Alyssa throw her controller is the gauge? <laughs> if it was three feet, then it was a th- kind of bothersome So I enemy. put in my rage scale here. <laughs> Ra- a rage scale? Yeah, wow. I put through the controller when I had to, when I had to, well, basically this explains why. So okay. number four is the like, like. <laughs> oh well there we go there we go yeah so the like like in okay so in ocarina time easily avoidable yeah uh, majora's mask again underwater and you're trying they to put them underwater they have some underwater right. and the one this one <laughs> i got sucked up by one spit out um my mom was talking to me about something i didn't realize <laughs> i didn't have my shield anymore oh no left <laughs> And try to come back to kill it to find to get to get my shield back, and, and I wanna... and it didn't get my shield back. Right. So I had to go purchase another Hylian shield. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I've never <laughs> even tried to get my shield back. As soon as they eat it, I'm like, well, I'm going to the market. No, like if you kill it, it's, you can get it back. It can, you can get it back. I never it even wouldn't. Tried. And um, that that's one got me in trouble for throwing the controller when I was younger. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so it's also bothersome to me just because, like, again, the underwater mechanic in Majora, Majora's Mask, like, it's fun and all. Um, this is just another thing that's just, like, I need to kill it or literally try to go all the way around it. And that's okay. just, like, annoying. Because <laughs> it's, like, trying to kill it, it it's, like, um, when you're Azora in Majora's Mask, you kind of have to, like, hit and then, like, wind up your little, like, throwing spear things that you can throw at it. Um, and it's, like it has time to kind of like suck you in. Um, And then it's like, if you're just regular link and you try to use like the grappling hook on Mm -hmm, it, it just mm -hmm. stuns it, doesn't kill it. That's true. So they're kind of annoying to try to defeat underwater more than in Majora's. Oh, the grappling hook, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So like in Ocarina of Time, they're way easier to deal with than Majora's Mask. I think the boomerang stuns them. Doesn't the hook Mm -hmm. shot like pull you into them or some horrible thing? Yeah, actually, yeah. It kind of like stuns and pull you in, which does not help the fact because they're- they're, (laughs) Now you're just closer to that thing. Now you're just closer, yeah. Yeah, so my number four was the like like. Yeah, which is I funny. had <laughs> I admittedly had like legs on my list for a while, but then uh-huh. I upgraded to the rupee like. The rupee like. Stinking liars. <laughs> <laughs> I think um I have three more. Why don't we mm-hmm. go to break and we'll come cool. back and we'll we'll do those three and we'll do some of our honorable mentions, okay? Awesome. Cool. <laughs> Hey, this is TC. And this is Jim from the Studio Demands It podcast. Where every episode we take a demand from a hypothetical studio. Which could be you. And challenge ourselves to conceptualize, pitch, and craft a film based on the stipulations. Or the demands. We are given. We talk about movies all the time. Particularly, we complain about the choices made in the films we've seen. We're nerds like that. And, of course, like any good nerd does, we automatically assume that we could do better. Even with the demands and restrictions that clearly 
must have been put on by a production. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com and listen to our previous library of episodes. Our library of previous episodes. Our precious library, Jim. <laughs> our library of precious episodes. <laughs> You're a pirate Smeagol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com to listen to our library of episodes. And submit your demand for a future episode, too. So go do that. Okay, bye. Okay, end of ad. Hi, I'm Ryan. And I'm Mike. And, and we, we are, are brothers-in-law. Brothers we both love beer and are amateur home brewers. Wait, so does that make us... brothers in law <laughs> I believe so. Every episode, we will talk about aspects of beer and home brewing. But nothing super technical because we're learning this too. So join us as we sit down together and dive into something beer related. Whether it's a little field research, tasting a certain beer style or beers from a specific brewery. Talk about our experiences brewing beer at home, including our own solo brews, as well as themed competitions we'll set up along the way. We will also talk about some of our favorite aspects of brewing, like hops, extra ingredients, building our brew cave, and more. And of course, our own misadventures that have happened along the way. So, if you like beer, are home brewing already, or if you have an interest in home brewing and don't know where to start, join us on Brewers in Law Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to follow us on Twitter at Brewers in Law, and check out our website BrewersInLaw.com. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, we are back. I am David Geisler here with Alyssa Ortiz, and we are talking. Well, we're about halfway through yes. our top ten list. Mm -hmm. of most bothersome enemies. And so far, Alyssa, what did we have? We had the Rupee-like, mm -hmm. the Octorox, specifically in Breath of the Wild. Octorox and some of the other games, they don't bother me. Right. The Octorox in Breath of the Wild. Skullfish for me and the Like Like. Ah, uh, yes, of course. <laughs> so my number three mm -hmm. is a bit, a bit more, they start going classic here. My next three okay. are pretty much like the old games. Okay, cool. And to some degree, this speaks to how games were made back in the day where artificial intelligence of the bad guys what um, maybe wasn't as robust or um okay you know what i mean mm -hmm. um consider a goomba which it's all it's only artificial intelligence is walk a direction and if you hit something <laughs> walk the other direction right compared to i don't know even just like an alien in halo from 15 years ago like completely <laughs> different, you know what i mean yes all right um so my number three is the classic from the original Legend of Zelda, but admittedly also kind of a link to the past and also a few other games, mm -hmm. the River Zoras. The River Zoras? The River Zoras. Okay. Now, this is kind of a little bit of retcon. They weren't exactly... I think they might have been called River Zoras in the beginning, but these are the little faces that pop out of the water mm -hmm. and just shoot fireballs at you. Oh, okay. In the original I, The Legend of Zelda. Okay. If there's water... There's a river There's. Zora shooting fire at you. And they're so bothersome. They're so mm -hmm. annoying because it's, oftentimes you cannot even reach them. You can't. Maybe once you finally get arrows, you can try to line up a shot or something like that. Right. But you have to. The You cannot deal with the river Zoras. And, you know, there's a whole, like I said, kind of retconned... Um, lore to that now where the, mm -hmm. there's the ocean zoras which are the nice zoras that we know and then the river right. zoras are the ones that are a little bit more crabby there's yeah. discussion about evolution and de-evolution and all you know maybe some of the river there's i think one of the zelda games the river zoras actually break off from the ocean zoras and they become their own kind of primal tribe and that's where we get some of that stuff but at <laughs> least so you know the 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 ori the origin of zoras are, do, they did technically exist in that first Legend of Zelda game. Mm -hmm. They didn't become the nice zoras that we know until Ocarina of Time. Mm -hmm. That's but true. Those river zoras, <laughs> which specifically river zora, they are so bothersome because anytime you're trying to do anything on a tile or a screen in the mm -hmm. original Legend of Zelda that has water, they were there. You're all you, you spend fifty percent <laughs> of your capacity just dodging the fireballs. Oh my god! You know, and doing doing anything else. This is true. And again, I the reason I bring this one up is like if there was a way to actively, even if it was challenging, mm -hmm. actively defeat a River Zora, 
I would find it significantly less bothersome. <laughs> Let's talk about lionels in Breath of the Wild. They mm -hmm. are really difficult at first, right? Maybe eventually you learn how to do your shield parries and eventually you learn mm -hmm. how to do your dodges when they thrust at you and stuff like that. And eventually you can deal with them. Right. But in the beginning, they are so difficult that you must just avoid them. Yes. But you can get there. What I mean mm -hmm. by get there, you can get to a point where you can actually fight them a little bit. And yeah. at a certain point, you can get there. With River Zoras, in my opinion, that's not an option. They're just enemies with mm -hmm. limited AI. They pop up randomly. That's like literally their AI code. Right. And they shoot a fireball at your coordinates. And that's it. I agree with this. Super bothersome. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Those fireballs go through walls, everything. Oh, my God. The, the amount of times I hear, oop, oop, oop. Oh, yeah. Because uh -huh. you're getting hit by the River Zora and fireballs. <laughs> <laughs> trying to fight off other things anyways so river Zoras for me are number three it only okay. it only gets worse from here okay <laughs> um okay let me see what do i have here ah my number three ready mm -hmm. so the keys or aka the bats yes so in every game in every I don't know how many games the keys are in, but I think they're in almost every almost single game. every game. Yeah. Um, so the ones um, that bother me the most, um, any keys that swoop through fire to catch on fire to catch me on fire, <laughs> I am not for that. Especially when you had a wooden shield that and can burn. It, that can burn. <laughs> Annoying. And and then I never knew where they were coming from, which yeah. was great. And yeah. there were some that went through like the ice fire and froze you. And it's like, I don't want that either. <laughs> yeah. So you, 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 in my opinion, mm -hmm. you're definitely referencing the Ocarina of Time keys that mm -hmm. definitely uh, yes. have elemental situations. Yeah. Uh, but the right first time now, I think yeah. you encounter the fire keys is in the Dodongo mm -hmm. cavern. Yes. They fly at you. And then later on in that ice cavern is, I think, where they hit the blue flame. And yes. Stuff like that. And I put keys as general and in general because now in um, Breath of the Wild, the mm -hmm. electric ones are the ones that kind of like fly out of nowhere. Like, yes. Or in the field when I'm, tr okay, if it's nighttime and I don't pay attention, I'm climbing a mountain and then here comes the swarm of keys. Yeah, right. Oh my gosh. Especially the electric ones. They're just like, no, stay away from me. <laughs> Don't. Yeah, completely, totally. And you know what's interesting mm -hmm. is in a 3D Zelda, any of the 3D Zelda games, you can lock onto a keys. Yeah. And occasionally the keys are like a just a vanilla keys. No elemental effects in Breath yeah. of the Wild is embarrassingly easy. They basically fly mm -hmm. up to you and hover and wait for you to hit them. Yeah, you know? I learned that. So you just lock on and hit them, fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's not particularly bothersome. Yeah. But it's all these other effects and elements. The effects and elements, and when I'm trying to climb and I didn't realize there was a swarm of them. Yeah, sure, the swarms, I get it. I get yeah. It. And another thing is the keys in the 2D games, there is no lock on. No. So just think about being in a dungeon in the original Legend of Zelda or even uh, A Link to the Past or something. Mm -hmm. These things are just flying around. Sw you know, you can defeat them with a boomerang, Mm -hmm. But they can usually fly over walls. They can usually yep. they usually just fly around. Um, the only thing worse than a keese is a crow in, oh, in the two D games, yes. where they fly up and swoop down at you. Exactly. I have I always had trouble with things flying over my head and swooping down for me. <laughs> it's like no, don't do that. I don't need that here. I already have an enemy over there and an enemy over there, yep. and you're gonna come from above and do this to me. <laughs> don't. <laughs> the keese. I like it. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Anything that makes you drop a sword and a shield is pretty bothersome. <laughs> I was just, what is it? There's a, those little, um, there's those electric worm guys that walk around too. Oh my god! That do that, like in a link to the past and stuff. Where yeah. They you make you drop stuff. I hate electricity. <laughs> All right. So my number two. Yes. I'm going to say this character's name and you're going to say who's that because oh. I didn't know this character's name. Okay. Or this bad, this bad guy's name. Okay. But I'll give you a hint. Okay. It's from The Adventure of Link. So Zelda 2. Mm-hmm. Is a tremendously bothersome character, and again, it does a little bit fall victim to that bad AI thing that happened in early Nintendo games. Wasu. Wasu. Yeah, don't you just hate Wasu? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Wosu. W O S U. Mm. Now, I don't know how often you've played Adventure of Link. Some people played a lot. Some people only a little. I've played a little. If you've even gotten into one dungeon, okay, you've probably seen see. this character right here. I'm showing you a picture. Oh. Yeah. The wolf with the knife. The wolf with the knife. The wolf they with the knife. They have a name. <laughs> it's Wasu. Wasu. Is the wolf with a knife. Huh. So the reason these things are so annoying and so bothersome is because they are classic early video games. Not even just early Nintendo games. Uh -huh. They um, have no AI at all. They simply walk in a single direction and bounce. And okay. if they touch you, 
it's a hit. Right? Oh, wow. It's a hit against you. Okay. They're not randomly generated. They are infinitely generated on a screen to just bounce along. They're almost like those early day <laughs> Mega Man bad guys that just keep mm-hmm. coming back no matter what. They just what. keep coming. There's no AI to a Wasu. A Wasu is how I'm saying it. Absolutely no AI. <laughs> they just continue to bounce along. In fact, there are times in some of the early dungeons in A Link to the Past where you're walking along and all you're doing is walk to the right, walk to the right, walk to the right, sword, sword, sword. Walk to the right, walk to the right, walk to the right. Sword, sword, sword. Because these guys just like a waterfall of werewolf men with knives just keep coming at you. And that's mm. fine. But that's it's kind of like cheap, baked in difficulty. Mm-hmm. Um, so by comparison, some of the other bad guys in um, The Adventure of Link okay. are tremendously challenging. Yeah. The gargoyles, the knights, you know, you have to do this really strategic like swing your sword low, swing your sword high, block with your shield up and down. Very challenging. I don't consider them to be bothersome at all mm-hmm. because there's challenge there and there's skill and you can work with it and you can <laughs> learn it, right? Right. It's not like, oh, this bad guy's so hard. These guys aren't hard. One swing of the sword and they evaporate into a mist of sparks or whatever. Uh-huh. Nothing. They're just a thing that gets in the way. They just <laughs> bounce towards you and, and at you. Keep coming back. They're the worst. <laughs> Wasu. Now, I do have a little bit of, because it Whoa. because we're starting to get later in the list here, yeah. I have a little bit of information about the Wasu. Awesome. Um, so one thing that's very interesting about them is that when they, they hit you, again, they barely have any animation at all. I think they uh-huh. like really just have a leg walk animation, and they just bounce along. Hmm. In the original Japanese version, they just took a life point away from Link. But... This is what makes them even more bothersome, and I mean this. I'm not, like, stretching. Okay. For the international release, in other words, the American release, these little stinkers that bounce along. So there is a experience point system in The Adventure of Link. It's the only Zelda game. Well, let's just say it's one of the only Zelda games where you, like, actually, when you defeat enemies, it gives you experience to fulfill skills more like a role-playing game. Okay. All right? So normally, if you defeat a spider or a gargoyle or anything, a little two pops up, a little ten pops up, and that's yeah. an experience point that builds up. And then that. when you level up, you can say, I want that to go to my sword or my ab- you know, different abilities. Yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. Yep. I actually think that's kind of fun in the Adventure yeah. of Link. They were, it was a departure for the series. They were trying some new things. The Wasu give you no experience. Oh, my god! So you just, you're just hitting things, right? They bounce mm. at you. You hit them. They go away. You didn't get anything for it. They're just stuff in the way. Furthermore, the international release, mm-hmm. if they hit you, they take experience. Oh, no. Like a werewolf. More like a vampire, in my opinion. I didn't but they're even basically know that. werewolves. It's also the first time wolves appeared in the Zelda series. It was only the uh-huh. second Zelda game, but it's the first time they, wolves appeared. And uh, they have a little cameo in, in one of the episodes of Captain N in the Game Master. <laughs> and they get taken out pretty quickly. Link like literally just touches his sword to them and they disappear. But also one other fun fact about the Wasu is that their sprite has a small red pixel under the knife, Mm -hmm. which evokes like a drip of blood coming off the knife. Oh. I'll show you. I know Mm -hmm. the audience can't see this, but look closely (laughs) at that sprite. See that one little red pixel down there? Yes. It is blood coming off the knife, and it's the first time (laughs) blood was seen in a Zelda game. Wow. I mean, we're stretching here. It is a single red dot <laughs> it's on all like pixel. a 16 by 32 <laughs> pixel creature, but it is a little violent. And there it is. It's the mm. first time that all showed up. Oh, wow. So the Wasu. Learn something new. Tremendously bothersome. Yeah. I remember it just from your description. I remember the experience point system. I remember that. Mm-hmm. I forgot how bothersome they were. I, I agree with you on that. <laughs> the next one. time you play a, the Adventure of Link, you're going to be like, "What? Mm-hmm. These aren't even enemies. This is just like a <laughs> thing. This is just vines in the wind." They put it there to Get bring my, my blood, bring up my blood pressure. That's why they're there. <laughs> <laughs> that might be it. That might be it. All right. So, Alyssa, what is your number two? My number two, because I broke my controller because of this. Also, Dang. side note: this is something that naturally is not so bothersome in my opinion. Um, I think I had a hard time with it. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think just the mechanics of Zelda games can be a little off. So this one's the shell blade. You know what? a shell blade? A shell blade? Shell. Shell blade? blade? Yeah. I'll show you a picture. Please do. So I just see them. 
Oh, these are those like uh-huh. attack clams. So the attack clams in Jabu Jabu, I think they're in Jabu Jabu. They're in the Water Temple. Yes, they are. And You're right. They Not are Jabu-Jabu. in um, Majora's Mask, also I believe. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. I think the my, the reason why this one was so bothersome is that you have to make sure they they attack you with their butt. Basically, they close <laughs> up and they scoot towards you. Yeah. And they hurt. Okay, so you have to some and you they put them in these like hallway areas in the water temple yeah, where it's hard to get. You have to like swim, or you know the the whole boot mechanic of off boats on yeah, yeah. boots. So you have to like try to get around it before it hits you, and you have to wait till it opens its shell to get to to shoot it in the mouth. Basically, yeah, you got to get its tongue or whatever that it, you know the muscle yeah, that would be inside a clam exactly so you have to wait for it to turn around you have to hope that it doesn't dash at you i got stuck in a corner for a while mm-hmm. and got killed 10 by- hours you were in that corner for 10 hours weren't well you? basically i threw my controller and i broke Alyssa, we don't condone <laughs> we don't condone damaging this. property side note this was like high school me i was very young okay i'm sorry very angsty very angsty angry <laughs> oh, but God. yeah th- i think I think they're very bothersome just because the fact that you have to you have to really like wait for it to be at a at a very vulnerable um, yeah, spot. I totally agree. And the fact that they put them in the most inconvenient locations where it's very hard to get around them. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, and they just like keep attacking you with their darn their darn butts, and it's just yeah. Like I think naturally is not that bothersome, but to me they were very bothersome by placement and the fact that the the mechanic of everything you hit it was like it sounded like metal it goes king king yeah. ching, king it's like yo you're not metal give me a, <laughs> you're not metal uh-huh. turn around and let me hit you so i can get through this dungeon i think you can hook shot them if they don't mm. move you can hook shot their little muscle tongue thing mm-hmm. but yes no i can i concur they are quite bothersome yeah Those things are annoying just trying to get to their weak spot and like i said the placement like i was literally stuck in a hallway for a while mm-hmm. Ten i was just like no no, but yeah, this one was up there in my list. That's cool. Because of my controller, yeah, I do not condone breaking any controllers. Just saying, unless you're an happened. angsty teenager, then go for it. <laughs> no, send a message to the world, to the system. I'm against the system. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. Mm. So that was yeah. So that was Ocarina of Time, really, huh? You yeah. broke a Nintendo 64 controller. Yeah. Jeez Louise. That's why my mother was very angry. I'm glad you're not that person anymore. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not. No, save the controllers, people. Indeed. Save the controllers. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, so my number one. Mm. Here we go. Yes, I'm excited. This is a staple. This is a classic enemy that the second everybody remembers what I'm talking about, they're going to be like, I never want that enemy in my life ever again. I guarantee it. I'm that confident that this thing okay. is that bothersome. Okay. It's the lever. Do you know what that is? The lever. I know. I'm kind of being ambiguous right now on purpose. <laughs> I don't know. So the lever has appeared in almost every single Zelda game. In okay. fact, here's a list. It is in The Legend of Zelda, The Adventure of Link, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, Four Swords Adventures, The Minish Cap, Twilight Princess, A Link Between Worlds, Triforce Heroes. The lever, <laughs> I'm going to show you a picture. Yeah, show me. It's the stinking, spirally tooth teeth things that come out of the desert and spin at you. Oh, Here, yes. I'm showing you a picture. I, yeah, yeah. Technically, that little thing right there. I know, I know exactly. Every what Zelda just, game. I did not know that's what they're called. They're called levers. L e e v e r. Huh. Every time. I mean, what did I used to call them? I'm in the desert <laughs> for the original Legend of Zelda. Anytime you're just like, really, do we need to have these here? They oh seem so God. unfair. They can pop up and down. They take so much life away. It feels like it's almost a little unfair on how to battle them. And again, this is not mm-hmm. this is not a, a complaint about enemies being too challenging or, or, or too easy or anything like that. They are so bothersome. There's almost not a screen that I can't not get hit by one because of the random way they pop up and then they just spin at you and yeah. um, they appear in all these games. Wow. In fact, um, the um, so now they, they, they're also in Ocarina of Time and then there's mm-hmm. even big levers in our Ocarina of Time. You might yeah, remember. Yeah, I remember. Now, at least in Ocarina of Time, they make a noise where they hear like... Yes. As they're, coming, as they're spinning towards you. I remember you. that. And you can kind of <laughs> run away. Yes. Um, but they're all over the place. The mm-hmm. really, really the ones that I find to be t- tremendously bothersome are the 2D ones. The ones that you can't yeah. lock on to. And And yeah. um, they just slide in. They just pop up anywhere and they slide towards you. Technically, mm-hmm. the official Nintendo strategy guide... Um, for, for Ocarina of Time, at least, uh-huh. says that they're a type of cactus. 
But I find that hard to believe. I guess but maybe a they are plant-based. with like a flower on the head kind of thing, maybe. If you were to look at this graphic here, I'm so sorry, I know it's an audio podcast. <laughs> look at that piece of artwork. Maybe it's plant-like. Yeah. So, I mean, I never interpreted them that. I always thought that they were basically tremors, like those tremor right. worms is what I figured. <laughs> tremor worms. I thought they were tremor worms coming up to like take yeah. my soul. But it, I think annoying. they're technically a plant. <laughs> Oh my god! They're the blue yeah. and red in the original Legend of Zelda. Those blue and red things that pop up out of the desert, spin, mm-hmm. and come at you. And um, they're they're such a common enemy in in Zelda games that even in the first episode of season three here, Dan and I did a favorite uh, Zelda commercials episode. Okay. Uh huh. And there's this kind of now famous or infamous Zelda rap episode that happened. Well, actually, there were two <laughs> rap commercials that happened yeah. uh, in the early '80s. There's the there's the there's the one where like the nerd raps to the cool guy. Yeah, I We've remember all seen that. It. Yeah. Well, literally one of the lines in that rap is what is it? It's oct. I have it in my notes. Oct- Octorots, tech tykes, levers too. The blah 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 blah. They're coming for you. They say levers in that commercial. So this mm-hmm. is a staple bad guy. It's not some rogue weird thing on the side. They're everywhere. <laughs> they're everywhere. And they're they... so bothersome. They're they're a little cheap. They're a little cheap. It's more like. Uh, people are crossing that desert too easy. Put some more levers in there. <laughs> like there's four of them. There's two red ones and a blue one. All right. Yeah, and then and the two blue ones. the ones that pop out out of the sand and they just kind of like sink back in at the, into the sand after they hit you. So yes, yeah, yeah. You're like, I got you. I'm gonna get you. And then they sink back in. You're like, no, I didn't like, get, no, I couldn't get it. No, no, and I can get you. Levers. They're a staple of the Zelda series, and for me, they're every mm-hmm. time I see them, I'm like, please, no, so bothersome. <laughs> Go away. So bothersome. I mean, you can handle them. Sometimes you can defeat them. Yeah. No, I get that. What's your number one? I got to know. So my number one, um, they're in a few Zelda games. I'm not sure if they're all called the same thing, but the Stalfos. Sure. <laughs> the Stalfos are the skeleton dudes. Yes. Right now in Breath of the Wild, they pop out of the ground. You have to make sure you kill the skull yep. or else they just attach to another body if there's multiples of them. Mm-hmm. In Wind Waker, um, he they also uh, pop up, but they swing their um, club that they carry and they spin yes. at you yes. i'm not sure if they're called the same thing in ocarina of time um at are. night when they the skeleton dudes that pop out of the ground mm-hmm. so the reason why they're number one on my list is the fact that you have to defeat the skull you have to find the skull and kill the skull sure. and and then or else it attaches to another body um the fact that they always pop up at night always bothering me um you know, I think I can piggyback off that a little yeah. bit. Whenever there's just like a random algorithm to make stuff pop up around you, yeah, I would say that the Stalfos, specifically in Ocarina of Time, the way they pop up anywhere at night, mm. that's not really strategy or AI. That's no. just zombies coming out of the ground randomly. Mm-hmm. And I would say that they're not much more dynamic than these uh, these wo- Wosus, yeah, these they're wolf just, characters. They're just there. They're, yeah. They annoy. They just spawn and they just come at you. Mm-hmm. At least in Breath of the Wild, mm-hmm. having to hit the head and the body and all that stuff. Yeah. Pardon me. At least there's a little bit of strategy there's to strategy it. There's strategy to it. That's definitely... It's the fact that I always forget that I have to go after the skull. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And then I think also in Wind Waker, they bothered me so much because they spun... Yeah, and and there was always that. anything that spins towards me, I just like what do I do? What do I do? And I forget I have a shield most of the time, and it's just like <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? And it's like like I I guess I put them as one because they've bothered me a lot in the multiple yeah. games also. Um, that one yeah. was tied with another one, but even like, in Breath of the so Wild, many. when they randomly generate at night, I'm like mm-hmm. I don't need this right now. I don't want to deal with you right now. I don't yeah, need this. Uh, like. I, I run away from you. I was like, yeah. if I have enough stamina, I'm out of you. But then you get far away and more spawn. Because it's a random spawn. It's That's a the random thing. It's spawn. It's a little annoying. Yeah. Yes, the okay, random spawning. Yeah, that Staphos. was my number one. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's good. So we've had Leavers, Staphos, mm-hmm. the Wasu, Wosu. Um, let's see. River Zoras, what were your three that we just went over? Uh, the Keys, Shell Blade, mm-hmm. and the Staphos. Yes, yes. The bats, uh-huh. the killer clams, and the zombies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be honest. Like, I think I changed my number one like three times. There's so many enemies that really get in your way in, in these games, like, and get in the way. It's it. This was a hard list to create. I'm okay with <laughs> Staphos and Leavers mm-hmm. being the top of our list. What are some of your honorable mm-hmm. mentions? Um, the Yiga clan. <laughs> Just in general? In general. Oh, or maybe the encounters? The encounters. Um, yeah, they're... they're Especially if I accidentally am in an area where it's like a little higher level than where I'm at. Yeah. And all you have to hear is like, 
<laughs> and then it's like, I can't even run away from you because you're just going to poof and catch up to me and, just, and, keep randomly and just poofing. kill me. And it's just like, go away. Yeah. I'm just trying to get to an area where, where I can just like work on getting better and you're here to kill me. Now, with that said, when you <laughs> encounter like the stealth Yiga, the ones that are pretending yeah. to be other people, that's less mm-hmm. bothersome that's less or annoying bothersome. because you're kind of like, mm-hmm. oh, dang, I got I got scooped. Mm-hmm. Time to have a fight. But when they, you know what? We're circling around something here. Mm-hmm. The enemies that annoy us the most yes. are the ones that are driven by random uh, encounters. Not even random AI, but just like, okay, random. here's the AI. This will randomly pop up now. Mm-hmm. That's why it's bothersome because you're like, I don't even know if I deserve or earn, mm-hmm. earn this fight. It just came up randomly. Yeah, I agree with you. Because like I said, they, they just poof out of nowhere. It's like, I'm just trying to get somewhere, dude. Like, give yep. me a second. Yep. <laughs> like I said, especially if I find myself in an area that's a little higher level than where I'm at. And they just like one shot you. And I'm like, no, don't one shoot one shot me. <laughs> don't do not do that. Yeah. Uh, what else you got? Um, the whiz robes. But I think because I've encountered them twice and had a hard time um, with Breath their like. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, because they like really prancy around. They kind of like poof around, and um, it was hard for me to figure out how how to defeat them. So that was kind of, kind of mm-hmm. like semi on my list. Even those original two mm-hmm. D wizard robes are pretty rough because they just mm-hmm. randomly show up and then they shoot in a certain direction. Yeah, in the original Legend of Zelda. Like yeah, that. that's true. Yeah, so that one was an honorable mes- sure. mention. And then the freeze art. Do you know what a freeze art is? Sounds familiar. No, so know. those are the ice sculptures in, I oh. guess, in... Um, Twilight Princess, maybe? They're in Ocarina of Time. I think, I'm not sure, Majora's Mask. And in, I think, in Twilight Princess. They're like um, dragons. They look like dragon ice skulls in one of the games. Like yes. a dragon skull. Yes, and they bounce around? Yeah, some move around. Well, they're just like frozen statues that freeze you. I think I know what you're talking about. I don't about have now. a picture of yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, this is an honorable mention. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I think I've yeah, seen Yeah, so those are annoying when you're in anything that has to do with slippery ice <laughs> and they're like moving around and freezing you. And yeah. it's just like, no, leave me alone. And like once you finally get the like fire arrows, it's like, okay, let me just disintegrate you, disintegrate you. But on the journey to getting the fire arrows and you don't, or you don't have them yet, they're annoying because you have to hit them with the sword and hope they don't hit you first. Yeah. And they just, on, just freeze you and... That just takes away a lot so of bothersome. time. I hate that. <laughs> well, I feel like we I feel like we've really gotten a lot off our chest here with this episode. <laughs> yeah. I had a lot to say about these enemies. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, it is interesting when you because because usually what you get in a Zelda game is really satisfying combat and really satisfying AI and yeah. and, and things like that. And certainly as the games get more advanced, we get more um, fulfilling experiences that when when you when it does resort down to something that's just random. There's less, um, because you can kind of suss out that it's random, because as yeah. a player you can feel it's random, there's less emotion and impact to that battle and that fight. And, and I think that leads to things that start making us feel like, do I really need to do this right now? Mm-hmm. You know, not the opposite would be like, oh my goodness, I got to get out of here. I don't, <laughs> I cannot handle this right now because this character is so strong or that. That's not bothersome. That's interesting. Yeah. That's dramatic. It's dramatic. That's yeah. true. The kind where you're like, mm-hmm. you know, the Yiga clan popping up halfway through the game, you're just like, dude. Yeah. All like, right. Fi- you know what? Just come over here and give me your banana. I'm yeah. just going to hit you with my sword five times. Yeah, Let's go. That, that banana obsession is very weird. <laughs> mighty bananas, man. The best the food mighty in the mighty bananas. <laughs> mighty simmered fruit. Mighty simmered fruit. That's what it is. When you cook five bananas. Oh, yeah. The mighty simmered fruit. It's oh the my, best recipe so in the funny. game, in my opinion. <laughs> awesome. Well, Alyssa, thank you for hanging out and making this list with me. Yeah, of course. Uh, people want to find you on Instagram or something. Where can they do that? ZeldaGirl90 on Instagram. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm-hmm. I am Raptor Paint on Instagram and uh, mm-hmm. Twitter as well. You can find the show on Instagram. Instagram at another Zelda podcast or on Twitter at another Zelda pod. You can go to our website, another Zelda podcast.com where you can find links to all of our previous episodes and a bunch of our blog posts and things like that. We have a new section of just like fun stuff. Sometimes fans send in um, artwork and stuff and I'm putting it up in there. Nice. It's very cool. And also then on our website, you can find links to our Patreon page. Or just go to actual Patreon, patreon.com slash another Zelda podcast. We can get a bunch of uh uh, behind the scenes content we do bonus episodes over there literally right now we're recording hey magical sword people how you doing hey. our top tier patrons <laughs> they get to watch us record these episodes they hang out with us a little bit before and after the recordings by by way of us having a camera in the studio recording us yes. so it's a way that we kind of get to hang out with them and that's always a lot of fun okay mm-hmm. another Zelda podcast.com Alyssa 
It was a blast. Yes. I can't wait to have you have you back. Of course. But you know, even saying back now, this this AZP family in season three has grown. Yeah. That you guys aren't even guests to me anymore. You're just hosts <laughs> with us at this point. You know what I mean? Oh, I appreciate it's that. Nice. <laughs> no, I love doing this with you, and I and, you know I love the I love this podcast, and I'm you know excited to do more. <laughs> Ooh, I am too. I am too for sure. All right. Thank you so much, Lissa. We'll we'll see you next time. I don't know when it'll be just yet. No problem. Bye now. Okay, bye. There it is. You know, we didn't do that in the other episode, I realized. I did it. I just, it just came to me. Oh, I'm so happy you did. I'm so happy you did. All right. (laughs)